Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Walters here and today I want to talk a little bit about a switch that I'm making from Adobe Photoshop to Affinity Photo. And for those of you not familiar with why I'm making that switch, it's because Photoshop costs me $55 a month. I have the whole Photoshop cloud and all the products that come with it. And so after the last time Photoshop updated and it changed all the palettes and added all new features and I didn't know why it updated, I realized I'm spending way too much on this product and I wanted to look at what's out there. And it turns out Affinity Photo was on sale for 39 bucks, and that's for a lifetime license. And I'm like, okay, let's check this out because I think it's a pretty cool product. I decided the way I wanted to pursue this process is to try and create some tutorials and do some things I might be doing in Photoshop and do them in Affinity Photo if it works. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First, I need to set my snapping to make sure that I have snap to guides. The rest of this is default, but just make sure snap to guides is turned on. Then we'll do a new... 1K by 1K, 1024 by 1024 pixels, which is a good tileable texture for 3D texture maps. Here is our file. I can hold the control key down and I can zoom in and out. On Photoshop, you do that with the alt key and of course the space bar will allow you to move it around and then we have the standard cursor. Let's go ahead and set up some guides and that's fairly simple. View, guides manager, we'll just add, add one horizontal and one vertical, put, automatically puts them in the center. So now we have this set up. Next, we're going to use the place command, which is familiar to Photoshop users. And we are going to place this photograph I took of a floor. And I'll drag it out here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I want to make sure in this case, because this is a regular geometry texture, I want to have an equal number, either four or six. So if I look at this, let's just go ahead and let's look at how many we have on this. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we'll go to four. Let's move it somewhere like this. So I'll go one, two, three, four, something like that. Looks about right. And I want roughly about the same coloring and everything. So once I get it close, next thing I want to do is I'm going to want to adjust the perspective on it so that it's perfect. So I'll click on this little perspective tool. I'll turn off the show grid and I'm going to just drag this down a little bit. And, and in this case, I might turn off the snapping so I can just drag it down. I'm in a free mode. I think we're pretty good right there. Hit the apply button. Now over here, I want to duplicate this twice. With a layer selected, I'll go to layer and say duplicate. I can also say control J with a layer, with a layer selected and it'll duplicate it. So I'm going to take this one here and lock it. That's my original one. And this is the top one. So let's take a look at this top one. We're going to use a filter on it. And the filter we're going to use is called distort Affine, 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 I'm not sure how you pronounce that. 50, 50, you're familiar with this is the offset command in Photoshop, apply. So now we see we have that offset. Now I'm gonna move that below the original one. And the original one above that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this shape tool. And I'm gonna start off, by enable the magnet, start off here and then start dragging and with the control shift key down, I'm going to drag up to something like this. And I want to add an effect to that. So I'll turn a Gaussian blur effect on and let's just go out something like this. And then we'll go back to the layers and I can take this and just drop it directly on top of here and it becomes a mask. And now when I'm done, you see that I have constructed a tileable texture. Now, how do we know it's tileable? Let's do this. We're going to do file export, same size, JPEG, 90%. We're going to call it wood tile. Okay. Then I'm going to go to file and I'll do a new. And here's our new. And I want to add a tileable texture onto here. So to do that, I'm going to go to layer, new fill layer. And in the fill layer, I'm going to say type bitmap. It's going to ask me for a file. I'll put it in here. And then I can just drag this around. So I can just move it around, hold the shift key down to constrain it. And you'll see that that I have now a tileable texture. Now I can also click on this, which will lock it down so I can actually move it down a little more, but you'll see that, start to see that this indeed is a tileable texture. Got a little bit of a repeat going on, but it's not too bad, especially if you're, if you're looking at it in this kind of a mode right here. It looks like a pretty good tileable texture. So that's a quick way to figure out how to create tileable textures of regular geometric surfaces and it works really well. Hope this helps. So if you have a choice, I suggest you take a look at Affinity Photo. It's not very expensive. There's also Affinity Designer, which is a great tool if you want to replace Illustrator. There's also HitFilm, 
which is a free tool that allows you to replace both Premiere and After Effects in one application. See you around the web and uh, hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you later. Bye.